What's going on guys and welcome back to the crack a pack series today We are opening up a pack of Amon Ket a fairly new set one that I did get some experience drafting with so I'm hoping that I can give a Somewhat informative pack one pick one defined pick. That's what we're gonna try and do So we will of course go through every single card and hopefully be able to figure out what that will be uh, and so we kick it off with Hecuba Sentinels. So this is a 2-3 for 2 and a blue. Uh, whenever you cycle or discard a card, it gets plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. I should point out, cycling is a very big part of this set. There is a lot of cards in here that you'll be able to discard due to the cycling ability. And so uh, this very often times will get that plus 1, plus 1, especially if you're able to kind of build your deck around it. So this is actually a really solid 3-drop. It's not necessarily first pick. Uh, first pickable, but it is very, very solid. I do like that card quite a lot. Uh, Nimble Blade Kenra is a 1 3 for 1 and a red, and it has prowess. So, whenever you cast a non creature spell, it gets plus 1 plus 1 until the end of the turn. So, uh, there's an inherent problem, I think, with cards like this is that uh, it's a red card, it's a very low to the ground kind of aggro y card, but uh, it doesn't really fit into the standard red red deck wins style deck where you just pump it full of really cheap creatures and swing in because of the prowess. Uh, this really does much better in like a spells matter kinds of kind of deck, uh, which there is possibility to have in this. There is, uh, I believe, Enigma Drake in here and things like that. Uh, but in draft. I tend not to pick those cards too highly unless I just happen to actually get some really, really powerful instant sorceries, those kinds of things. Worth noting that it isn't just instants and sorceries that trigger prowess, it can just be any non-creature spell. Uh, and of course there's artifacts, enchantments, things like that in this set, so you may be able to find a place for this, but I don't like this very much at all. Uh, Sparring Mummy, Mummy excuse me, is a 3-3 three, three for 3 and a white. When it enters the battlefield, untap target creature. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of this. Uh, there is a zombie deck that's pretty powerful actually. There is a uh, Lord of the Accursed, that's a zombie lord basically. Uh, very very strong, uh, powerful archetype if you can get the cards. I'd rather have the lord before I go for something like this, but uh, there are some flagship cards that you would definitely want. <laughs> Uh, Naga Oracle is a 2-4 for 3 and a blue. When it enters the battlefield, you look at the top 3 cards of your library. Uh, you put any number of them into your graveyard and the rest back on top in any order. Uh, this is basically a self-mill card, but it does kind of help you dig and make sure that you're getting the cards that you need, which is also very nice. Uh, it is a 2-4 two for, two four for 4, which is a little bit high in my opinion. Uh, it's got a big butt, which is good, but it's not going to be dealing any damage. This is really just a filtery kind of blocking card. Uh, so it's okay. It's not really my favorite thing. There are definitely synergies with this, uh, but in general, I'd rather have the payoff cards before I have the cards like this. So, uh, Ornery Kudu is a 3-4 for 2 and a green. When it enters the battlefield, you put a negative 1, negative 1 counter on target creature you control. Oftentimes that might just be the Kudu. Uh, which in that case is going to be a 2-3 three for 3, which still isn't terrible. As you can see with the Sentinels, that's kind of on par. Uh, if you do have another creature that you can you can throw that negative 1 counter on, that also works. So I actually like this card. I think it's perfectly fine. 3-4 uh, three, for 3 is great. A 2-3 three for 3, meh, it's okay. So I, I do like this card. There are instances where I think this is quite good. Again, not super first pickable to be honest. Uh, Cursed Minotaur is a 3-2 for 2 and a black, and it has Menace, so it can't be blocked except by 2 or more creatures. Uh, that's now basically just an evergreen keyword at this point, but um, it it's fine. It's a good card in the zombie deck. Uh, it's otherwise just kind of a solid 3-drop. Uh, it does have Menace, which gives it that extra plus side, and it is a 3-2, which isn't bad in terms of stats for a 3-drop. In general, it's not super exciting. It's just kind of a solid 3-drop. Uh, zombies, above average 3-drop, but uh, in general, just kind of okay. Uh, Horror of the Broken Lands is a 4-4 four, four for 4 and a black. When you cycle or discard another card, it gets plus 2, plus 1 until end of turn, and this also has cycling for 1 black, so you can uh, pay 1 black, discard it, and then draw a card. So, as you can see, cycling being a part of this set, uh, this is actually a pretty good card. It's not amazing. It's a 5-drop 4-4, uh, four, four, which doesn't seem great, but uh, because there is so much cycling and discard in this set, uh, you can oftentimes pump this up to a 6-5, uh, 
which in that case is great. So uh, I think so far this is the pick. Uh, granted, we're still in the commons, so uh, take that with a grain of salt, but I do really like that card. Uh, Evolving Wilds, a land, a uh, very classic card. Sacrifice it and search your library for a basic land, put it onto the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle your deck. Uh, very classic. If you're in multiple colors, you'll want one or two of these just so you can flesh out your lands. Uh, it's not super exciting, to be honest, but it is a necessary uh, card in certain decks. So, not first pick by any means, but if you're late in the pack or late in the draft, like pack three or something like that, and you know you're going to be in multiple colors, this is exactly the kind of card you need. So, perfect for that. A uh, Hooded Brawler is a 3-2 for 2 and a green. You may exert it as it attacks, and if you do, it gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn. Now, exerting basically means it doesn't untap during your next untap step. So you basically tap it down for a full turn, but you get a big bonus for doing so. In this case, you can get a 5-4 for 3 mana, which is quite good. Uh, granted, it's going to be most of the time swinging on turn 4, so keep that in mind, but it is going to outpower a lot of things in this set. Uh, so I do like this card. I think this is a really solid pick. Uh, as a 3-drop, a 3-2, again, is like decent. It's not amazing, but it's, it's on par. Uh, and then being able to pump it up to that 5-4 to that is just really, really good. So I do like this card. It's not, I don't think, better than the Horror of the Broken Lands. I might be wrong on that, uh, but other way, yeah, I, I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, River Serpent is a 5-5 five, five for 5 and a blue. It can't attack unless there are 5 or more cards in your graveyard. We're seeing synergy with that other card that we saw earlier. Uh, it also has Cycling for 1 blue. Uh, so a pretty straightforward card, but a pretty important card. Uh, this is a powerful card in this set. A 5-5 five, five for 6 is pretty good. Uh, this is kind of top of the curve. Yes, it's in a blue deck too, which is a little bit weird. Uh, but it is pretty powerful, so I do like this card. It's not amazing, it's not one that I'm looking to necessarily first pick, uh, but it's okay, it's cool, uh, especially if you do have a lot of cyclers and things like that. Our first uncommon, open into wonder, uh, X and two blue, and it's a sorcery. X target creatures can't be blocked this turn. Until the end of the turn, those creatures gain whenever this, co this creature deals combat damage. Uh, to a player, you draw a card. So essentially this is a draw spell, that's kind of the idea. I don't really like a card like this because it's reliant on you attacking and you are in a blue deck. So uh, keep in mind, blue decks tend not to be quite so aggro as some of the other colors. Uh, they tend to be more spells matters, things like that. They do have blue white flyers, things like that, of course. So there is possibility for you to kind of evasively get in some damage. Uh, but in general, I don't really like a card like this. It's a lot of investment for not the best uh, return. Drawing is great, but in limited, not as exciting. Uh, Manglehorn is a two uh, is two two excuse me for two and a green. When it enters the battlefield, you may destroy target artifact, and then artifacts your opponent's control enter the battlefield tapped. So, this is very much a hate card. So if you're against an artifact matters deck, this is the exact kind of card that you would want. This is a really good sideboard tech kind of card. Uh, it's not bad just in general because you're probably going to find some value off of it. Uh, it may not be amazing value though, and so I'd, I'd kind of resort this to the sideboard most of the time. Uh, it is very good in those instances, especially if you're up against a deck where they're really reliant on their artifacts. Uh, this is just going to take them down, but uh, not necessarily first pickable by any means. If you're in green, it's good to have one. Uh, Limits of Solidarity is a sorcery for three and a red. Gain control of target creature until the end of the turn. Untap that creature, it, and it also gains haste until the end of the turn. And then you can cycle this for two of any color. Uh, this is a very classic style card where you steal somebody's creature and untap with it, and then you can attack with it. You can do whatever you want to do. So I really like this card. Uh, they didn't really increase the cost too much on it, uh, which I like. And they also gave it cycling, which makes it quite powerful, actually. Uh, I'm kind of on the fence as to whether this is better than Horror of the Broken Lands just because this will always have value because you can always cycle it. And that was the really big thing about cycling was that it gave value to cards that didn't necessarily have main deckable value in the first place. Things like Destroy Target, Artifact, or Enchantment. Well, that's not great most of the time, but if you give it cycling, then you can always have an out. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be relevant at every point in the game. So I actually really like cards like this. I'm kind of thinking, uh, I'm going to keep it here, we'll see. 
Uh, and then Scattered Groves is our rare, so it's a land, it is a forest and a plains, worth noting. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, uh, it comes into play tapped and then you can cycle it for two. Um, very class, like, these are the, the general dual lands, obviously, of this set. They're really good because they are forest and plains or, you know, mountain and things like that. That you can technically fetch these and they do have cycling, which is great, but they do enter the battlefield tapped. These are lands that in limited you'll want uh, if you're in these colors, and if you're not, then they're completely useless to you. So uh, not super exciting. And then of course we just have our token in our land. To be honest, for me, it's between these two. This is kind of a bad pack in my opinion. Um, I would probably take the horror of the broken lands just because you can cycle it early, early on, uh, literally turn one if you want. Uh, so I think that's what I would take. That might be incorrect, but feel free to uh, comment down below and let me know your thoughts. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I will see you in the next Crack a Pack episode.